All right, Travis went good sell. <coughs> How to beat uh, Mormons in a religious debate every single time. I already did the video the other day, but it uh, wasn't titled right, so nobody came to it. Sorry, I'm just taking notes. <clears throat> the latest tactic that Mormons are using when they're confronted with tough questions that they can't answer, and there's a lot of them, is that uh, they follow the living prophet. So that distracts and deflects from everything in the past. Every controversy, every contradiction, every confusion, every missing information. They just say, I'm just going to follow the living prophet. Uh, there was a period of time where Mormons were saying, well, I'm just going to focus on the basics. I'm not going to get involved into deep doctrine. Uh, and that's what they were referring to if you were to study church history or study ancient Egyptian, or study Paleo-Hebrew, and decipher Paleo-Hebrew, and decipher Egyptian petroglyphs, and discover that the Bible came from the Egyptian petroglyphs, and show that Joseph Smith was an actual translator, not just some spiritualizing revelator. Yes, I have over 700 videos now, and I go over all of that. And so, In the other video I did, I pointed out that uh, you need to know where Mormons get that argument from, that they're only going to follow the living prophet. And they get that from a dead prophet. <laughs> and thus another contradiction as they attempt to put a pa in the past all other contradictions. That's is that an irony? <laughs> Does that qualify as irony? Uh, but uh, uh, it's from Elder Benson, Ezra Taft Benson, Elder Ezra Taft Benson. He was not president of the church when he spoke at BYU and gave the 14 Fundamentals of the Prophet speech, which is where it came from. And so every BYU student who had, and Mormon, because you can watch those on TV uh, when they were on uh, here in Utah. So Utah Mormons and BYU students who attended that uh, all got out of that that, oh, okay, we can dismiss everything that's controversial in the church because we have a living prophet now. This was from an elder of the church, not the president of the church. And, uh, and Mormons do not see how that kind of thinking destroys the church. But uh, they live in delusional land as they continue to, to uh, repeat it over and over again as they've been laid off from work under this coronavirus as they don't have food for their families and money to pay for food and and uh, the church has closed down the bishop's storehouses as uh, I heard Kamala Harris earlier today talking to Nicole Wallace about how uh, she has seen religious organizations step up during this pandemic to give food assistance. And I'm going, oh man, she does not know the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Because they closed. And with a medical doctor as the president of the church. 
And so, I, uh, yeah, it, it, Mormons need to understand they can't use that argument. It just doesn't work because uh, I've dismantled it and you guys can now dismantle it when they pull that stunt on you and uh, rip them to shreds. Um, and there's much more that could be said on that as well. Uh, those who criticize Mormons have traditionally used the tactic of, oh, well, your doctrine is wrong because it's not the Christian doctrine and we get it from the Bible. You have this Book of Mormon and you're talking about uh, God the Father and Jesus Christ being separate individuals. Uh, you can't use that do argument either. In fact, that kind of an argument is what helped the church uh, gain up to the 16 million today. What destroyed the church in the loss of the 11 million back in 2011 uh, was the church as they tried to apologize and I, I mean defend unsoundly rather than oh I'm so sorry that, that's remorse expressing expressing remorse it's not apologizing uh, and apologizing is the gospel topic essays that they put online and uh, that's where they established the, uh, the the church policy or belief or foundation that Joseph Smith was not an actual translator. He was just a spiritualized revelator. And uh, uh, they also brought out that Brigham Young was a racist in their race and the priesthood. Uh, they uh, confessed to having Joseph Smith having one rock, they won't go so far as to have two rocks, because that would mean that that's the Urim and Thummim that he was claiming he had. And we have to have those separate. We have to have stone and the Urim and Thummim so that we can legitimize having found gold plates upon which was an actual history of the American Indians of the ancient days. And, and so they, they cannot give up certain information for that purpose. Uh, but to argue that, uh, you know, Joseph Smith was a, a, a warlock or a witch because he was looking at rocks in a hat, uh, the church can just brush you off. Uh, just like you, they can brush you off just because you say that you believe in the Trinity and that Mormons don't believe in the Trinity, therefore Mormons are not Christian, that they're pagan. You know, Mormons just brush it off, and that's how Mormons generated more members. But it was the church. When the church published online those gospel topic essays, uh, 11 million Mormons, and that's a rough estimate, uh, because we don't know the actual numbers because the church won't reveal the actual active membership attendance and sacrament meetings. And uh, uh, the Mormons realized uh, that the church had been lying to them. That the church is now claiming that Joseph Smith was polygamist that Brigham Young was racist, that Joseph Smith didn't know how to translate, uh, and uh, that the Book of Mormon wasn't translated from plates of this rock and a hat thing. And so this and others uh, disturbed Mormons because we weren't taught this growing up. Uh, for me, I had pursued uh, ancient languages deciphering Paleo-Hebrew, deciphering Egyptian picture glyphs, and making the connection in the Bible stories to the Egyptian picture glyphs. And so I never got involved into actual church history then. And I was finding out Joseph Smith was right. Little did I know that by 
uh, confirming that Joseph Smith was actually working on an attempt to be a translator, uh, not with the Book of Mormon, but uh, not with the Joseph Smith translation, but with the Book of Abraham. That was his first attempt at translation. Uh, he had learned uh, Hebrew uh, from uh, Rabbi Sykes' in 1836, uh, but he wasn't involved in the Book of Mormon. He wasn't involved with the Joseph Smith translation. And, and those were both Sidney Rigdon. Uh, and so his first attempt to actually work on something as a translation was the Book of Abraham and the Book of Joseph. And binders in the way so you can't see it on the table. You can sort of see a little tiny portion of it sticking out right there. That's the papyrus. And uh, I guess you can sort of see it over here, but no lights in the way. Um, no, well, I don't think that's it. The proportions are wrong. Yeah, I don't think that's it. Anyway, uh, and so uh, when Mormons come to you, after coronavirus is over now, of course, <laughs> or if they come to your channel, uh, and so yes, I'm not speaking to Mormons now, am I? I'm speaking to those who are ex-Mormon, who are uh, doing videos uh, critical of the church, and to those who have nothing to do with the church and just uh, do videos uh, against the church. This will help you. Uh, I mean, you may already be getting hundreds of thousands of views, good for you, uh, but you're not going to destroy Mormons. You're only going to reinforce those who are already loyal to you. Uh, to actually debate Mormons, you have to go uh, to their thinking process. And ex-Mormons know this better, uh, but the baggage of Mormonism carries with them. As I uh, uh, talked about uh, Ex Exmo Lex the other day, she was doing a video on uh, uh, the church's policy of uh, interfaith marriages uh, and was asking for uh, her viewers to submit their stories of interfaith marriages. And uh, she stated off the church's policy on that. And, and I indicated in the other video that nobody came to that uh, she was correct that that is the cultural understanding of the policy. It's not the scriptural one. And it's not the scriptural one of Brigham Young, and it's not the scriptural one of Joseph Smith either. Uh, there's different scriptural policies and if you don't understand that because Mormons don't either um, but uh, that's part of the problem in Mormonism is that they create uh, uh, doctrines I guess you can say uh, they, and uh, when they do that they lead others who are trying to say, hey, you know, polygamy is wrong, uh, racism is wrong, uh, and, uh, he couldn't translate, and Mormons just take him down a rabbit hole with their added doctrinal policies, their own speculations of how the doctrine of the church is. And, uh, and so, uh, Exmo Lex, uh, was correct about how Mormons uh, understand the policy, uh, but uh, it's it's way off base. Uh, for example, also, uh, you've probably heard that Mormons have a, uh, a dietary rule, a dietary commandment. They call it the word of wisdom. And you've probably heard that Mormons can't drink caffeine. Anything with caffeine, they can't drink it. 
It's not a scriptural policy. It's another example of this Mormon cultural tradition policy that Mormons created and then passed it on to others and then all Mormons, most Mormons, uh, believe that uh, Mountain Dew or Coca-Cola or, or Pepsi or whatever uh, is is forbidden in in the church and that's just not the case uh, but uh, that's the Mormon culture on how they defend themselves by placing up barriers and hedge laws and uh, that protects them from critics who come after them uh, and it's different than the Pharisees' hedge laws that Jesus was outright rebelling against. Uh, that was for the purpose of controlling the population uh, to keep them from violating the laws of Moses, but then eventually it turned into controlling the population. As you saw the Pharisees get infuriated with Jesus for being a sinner and a blasphemer and a drunken and uh, associating with sinners and blah 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 and uh, breaking the Sabbath and uh, uh, it's different in the Mormon church for the Mormon church it's a protection against uh, the heathen so that they can claim oh this is just our religious beliefs you need to back off and leave us alone and uh, and it has been working if people use their outside thinking arguments against the church or Christian thinking against the church and, uh, and so then when you have uh, President uh, Hinckley get on TV and say nope we don't drink caffeine uh, then Mormons go yeah he confirmed it for us Woo it's now law no, I did not say it over conference. And uh, but uh, yeah, R-rated movies also. Mormons think they can't see an R-rated movie. So Steven Spielberg, Schindler's List, his Amistad as well. Uh, Mormons think that the R rating itself is what is forbidden. And and it gets into a conflict with Canadians. Because in Cape Canada, uh, they have a different rating system. They have a mature level for rating, as well as an R. And so, uh, they also had a, uh, I think it was a PG-14. And so there were uh, mixtures. You know, there could be a PG-13 here in America, but Canada may say, no, I'm sorry, that violated our R-rated code, so it's R-rated. Uh, but some R-rated in, in uh, America may be mature-rated in Canada, uh, may even be PG-14 in Canada. And uh, there's many examples of the PG-14s in Canada that are R-rated here in America. So when Canadians go to uh, Rexburg, uh, they would rent videos uh, that were PG-14 and not even bother to look to see if it was R uh, because they're taking advantage of the loophole and, uh, but uh, when, you, when you create those kinds of laws that's just a recipe for destruction of the religion So if you've been paying attention to my videos, uh, the manner in which I debate Mormons as I'm talking to them, they are my intended audience, I use the Mormon thinking process. I use the Book of Mormon. I use uh, the true history because I actually did it. And even then, all it's doing is infuriating Mormons. 
because I'm one of them. Now, if you are not Mormon, then you can really get under a Mormon skin because they can't get mad at you for uh, telling them their own religion. And they'll have to come up with a new strategy as to how to defend themselves in their little bubble world. And, uh, uh, but that's how you do it. You actually have to do a thorough research of the Book of Mormon. Not just of the stories and uh, the precepts that are in the Book of Mormon. Uh, for example, how faith is to be understood. Uh, Mormons will tell you Moroni chapter 10 verses 3 through 5. But, you'll notice when they quote it to you, they, they don't understand that they're leaving out manifest and by and power. Uh, they're just, they're not understanding or they're purposely leaving those things out. I haven't fully understood it because I don't leave them out. When I read it, I understand it that way, and I understand it in the context of Alma chapter 32, verse 28. And so for me, uh, when Mormons uh, say that they have faith, but call it a testimony, I'm like, what are you talking about? You don't have a testimony, you just have faith. But no, I've had a spiritual witness from the Spirit and I feel that it is true. No, that's not what it is in, in Moroni chapter 10, verses 3 through 5. That's not the process. And so when you get them to confess about uh, their thinking process, they reveal that they're illiterate. That's why I wrote the book Mormon Illiteracy. And I altered it in title after the stake president was furious as the bishop told me and the bishop had to calm him down and say no that's not his intention <laughs> he was trying to help Mormons uh, perfect themselves in scripture literacy and no he saw the word and was furious <laughs> and wanted me banned and court-martialed and strung up by a rope get a rope New York, get a rope. Uh, paste picani sauce commercial. Uh, and so, I, yeah, Mormons are easily offended when you challenge them. All of a sudden, their defenses, defense walls, and barriers, and bubbles all pop up, and uh, they they get scared because you're about to destroy their thinking, their faith, their beliefs, their, their whole lie that they've been taught and raised up in and believed in their whole life. And yes, Mormons should be afraid when they find out that the truth is far more insidious than just being incorrect in what they've been thinking about. And, uh, and I've already gone over that. I mean, the inverted pentagram only has one symbol. It's only one interpretation for that symbol. Just like the circle is a universal symbol of the sun. And in China, they made it a square rather than a circle. But it's universal. So is the inverted pentagram. Just like the uh, uh, upside down cross so is the inverted pentagram and it's unmistakable and yet Brigham Young put it on the Nauvoo temple and dedicated that temple the Nauvoo temple on the Illuminati anniversary but then added it on the Salt Lake temple and then put the that same symbol on the Siegel Gate as it points directly to the state capitol.
And that, I think, is what worries Mormons the most, is that they can't come to grips with that they're in the church of Lucifer. That they have been deceived so successfully as to have been believing that Lucifer's church is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And the, the answers to all their questions is right there in the Book of Mormon. It's in the Doctrine and Covenants. It's in the uh, Pearl of Great Price, in the Selections of Moses. Moses chapter 4, verses 1 through 4, Mormons. They know this. They know that Lucifer uses pacification, flattery, deception, and anger to, to fool and deceive people. Uh, but they just don't see it in their own church because of the shock factor. It, it's, it's, it shuts off their brain. And I went through that on my mission, where my brain actually shut off as I was trying to contemplate, do I follow corrupt orders from uh, my peer district leader? You know, 19 year old district leaders, 19 year old area leaders, uh, 19 year old mission president, assistants, APs. Um, and uh, my brain couldn't handle the concept that that uh, they would actually be that corrupt for me not to follow them. And the concept of following them in something that was uncomfortable for me. And my brain actually shut off and I had to dismiss the whole thinking process and come back to it when I'm, I've got more of an understanding of things. And so, yeah, now it's simple. You stand up to church, Mormons, Mormons, church leaders, etc., who uh, tell you to do things that are wrong. Without question, without hesitation. And as a result, I've been um, outcast and, and shunned and, and uh, denied rising up in the hierarchy of the leadership because of that. And because I will not allow anybody. I went through it with my parents. And there, it, there's no way out with your parents. Even after you turn 18, they still come after you. Uh, but uh, with other Mormons, it's always easy to just walk away and say no. But uh, uh, when it's your church, uh, they, they use it against you as extortion. And uh, and again, like I said, they don't realize that they have been converted to the dark side. They're not the Jedi, they're the Sith. And, uh, uh, and so I, I hope you understand. I, if you uh, get into a debate with Mormons, uh, you would need to, to know uh, the actual scriptures. Because if they if they pull the stunt of, oh, I only follow the living prophet, then you just simply respond, so you don't believe in the Book of Mormon. Oh, no, 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 we believe in the Book of Mormon. You said you only follow the living prophet. If you only follow the living prophet, then you don't follow the Book of Mormon. Doesn't the Book of Mormon have the words of Jesus in it? So you don't follow Jesus either. Isn't your church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, doesn't Jesus lead your church? Why are you following a living prophet, ignoring Jesus, who is supposed to be the founder of your church, the head of your church, which is in the, his words are in the Book of Mormon? That's how you argue. And Mormons will get very uncomfortable, and they'll start to get very upset, and they'll want to want run away. You know, if you're in their house, they'll say, I'm going to have to ask you to leave now. Uh, we don't want to contend, because contention's of the devil. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, but isn't that your Book of Mormon? Isn't that the Word of God? You can be calm all you want. And, and say, so I'm not contending. You believe the Book of Mormon is the Word of God, don't you? 
Well, yeah. So why then are you not following the Book of Mormon and you're only following the living prophet? Uh, uh, see, it's a simple. And that's why Mormons will not debate me. That's why they run from me. That's why they shun me. That's why they abuse me. That's why they lash out emotionally with ad hominem arguments, which are not really arguments, it's just abusive comments. That's why apologists lash out with ad hominem, is because they cannot defend themselves. And so I hope this helps you uh, with doing videos on your channels, uh, and if you ha come across those who try to uh, debate you on your channels, or in your life, when we get back into regular society and we happen to survive. Because the church uh, is planned by the Illuminati to be the Church of Lucifer to conquer Christianity. Just so that you're warned, I've done this warning over and over again, but if this is your first video, uh, understand that that's the reason why. But yeah, it, it's, it's easy to defeat Mormons in their thinking processes. So, have fun.